So Christians don't attack the government. We don't protest. We don't riot. We don't start shooting people who are in the government, even if the government is King George from England and we don't like him. And even if we're upset with taxation, we don't start riots and we don't start revolutions. Um, I, I don't I don't see any justification for that. That is not what Christians do. We would rather suffer. But but I don't want to say we don't dissent because we do. And one of the things that comes up in this is freedom of speech. Do, is freedom of speech a biblical right? Um, it's not really an issue in the Bible, freedom of speech. Speech is controlled. Uh, we're to speak kindly. We're to speak with grace. We're to speak what edifies and builds up and encourages and comforts. We're not to lie. Um, we're, we're not to curse. Uh, we're not to blaspheme. So speech is, is controlled in, in, a, in the categories of righteousness and, uh, as opposed to sinful speech. So we don't have complete freedom of speech. We are also in the New Testament told to speak what edifies, but we also are commanded necessarily to dissent in our speech when the government is asking us to do something that is wrong or that God is telling us to do one thing they're telling us to do something else. Illustration in the New Testament, the apostles go out and they preach Christ and the Jews arrest them and say, stop. And so they said, you judge whether we obey God or men. And they went right back out to preach Christ. F freedom of speech for us is freedom to preach the truth of Christ, even when the society says that's against the law. And then you don't get an army, you go to jail. They went to jail. They took the consequences. They suffered the consequences of, of the faithfulness they had to preaching the truth. So we, we do dissent. Christians have always dissented through history. They've always had a dissenting message when persecution came. And inevitably, just to generalize that a little bit, when persecution of free speech comes, it always comes against the people who have the religious absolutes. Always. Because that's what threatens people's freedom to sin. So we're always going to be the culprits. At that point, we become dissenters because we continue to preach the truth no matter what the price. Okay, so MacArthur does go to the point that in Acts 5.29, that says that Peter and the other apostles answered the Jewish authorities that were challenging them and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. So that's really the crux of it. How does this apply in light of Romans 13? At what point are we not to submit to the rulers and authorities uh, because they are going against God? I mean, they seem to do that all the time, not just in uh, my Nazi Germany example, but uh, here in America we have enough uh, examples we can give where our government is not pursuing godly endeavors. And uh, on that note, are we to then submit to them still in light of 13, or are we to follow this uh, you know, description here in Acts 5 to obey God and not men. Well, interestingly, it seems like MacArthur is saying you follow this when it's about preaching Christ. In other words, if that's against the law in any country, we are still compelled to go out and face whatever consequences there will be in continuing to preach Christ anyway. And that's certainly what the early church did. We see that in Acts of the Apostles and in early church history. Um, and we also saw what happened to them. And so it seems like MacArthur is saying the only time you go against the Romans 13 uh, submitting to authorities is when it's about preaching Christ. So that's the conclusion I'm drawing from this conversation they had. And so, again, that means that the revolutionaries who were rebelling against Britain were not doing that purely for gospel reasons, but to have their own country now. In the process, they would have a country that have freedom of worship, the reason that's in the First Amendment, and uh, it would seem that they were following this command here in Acts 5.29 to pursue that endeavor, but MacArthur does not believe that. Um, I tend to probably lean in that direction, though not his direction, but what I had said that by the revolutionaries, by fighting back, were trying to establish a place where they could be free to worship God, but anyway... That's kind of where I'm at, kind of on the fence, and uh, not entirely in agreement with uh, John MacArthur, who is uh, much more knowledgeable than me, of course, on these matters. So, I'd like to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching the video to this point. And again, please go down in the comments and drop a comment 
Uh, if we get a conversation going down there, please join the conversation. Uh, keep it respectful. This is a chance for edification for all of us to learn. All right, well, thanks for watching this video. Hope you watch some other videos on my channel. If you like what you see here, please go ahead and subscribe. And have a blessed day.